this is Mari Elaine on the Buying Space channel. It's the fifth day of Christmas, and I am a day late uh, bringing you this message. December 28th, in the 12 days of Christmas celebration, is the Innocent Mus, and it's the day we remember the slaughter of the innocents. And it's rare that during Christmas time, during the 12 days of Christmas, a lot of people don't even know the 12 days of Christmas start Christmas Day and end on Epiphany, which is January 6th. And during Tudor times in England, on December 28th, which is the fourth day of Christmas, they had remembrance of the innocents. Now the innocents are the babies that Herod killed when he was trying to eliminate the next king of the Jews because he wanted his son and his lineage to continue to be the king of the Jews. Now this is from Adult Bible Studies Power and Love Winter 2022 and this is uh, published by Cokesbury. It is copyrighted information. I don't have the rights to the information. Uh, I am just um, repeating this for educational and uh, spiritual purposes uh, to make people aware. And one of the reasons that probably the celebration of the innocence went away is in Tudor times, people will go in and whip their children first thing in the morning in their beds to remind them of the sacrifice that the innocents made. Radical compassion. This is on page 39. It is rare to hear anyone speak of Herod and the slaughter of the innocents at Christmas time. Instead, we are charmed by the story of the baby in the manger. We hang on angels and our Christmas trees and honor the angels who sang to the shepherds. We give gifts as the Magi did, celebration of full of joy, welcoming the newborn king. But there is a new king, a king that takes place of an old king. While the Christmas story is certainly one of joy and new beginnings, it is also one of dismantling the old way of doing things. Jesus did not come to earth to protect the status quo, but to turn humankind's eyes towards God. A world doing God's will on earth would mean that any human desires will be no longer fulfilled. God calls the justice for all. Throughout history, humans have exploited others for their own advancement. Doing God's will means we call every person our neighbor. Humans have a hard time accepting others who are different. God abhors poverty and needs the need while others have an overabundance. Many humans struggle with generosity. Jesus' mother, Mary, knew the world upset those in power, that he would upset, the, upset those in power even as she carried him. Her song of joy, known as the Magnificent, says, he has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. It is good news for the lowly and hungry, but the powerful and rich, it is chilling. If people were in to follow this newborn king, the way of life for those in power would be threatened. If everyone lived their love their neighbor, the world would be turned upside down. Jesus brought a dangerous and disrupting message of compassion. Walter 
Brueggemann in his classic work, The Prophetic Imagination, wrote, Compassion constitutes a radical form of criticism, for it announces that the hurt is to be taken seriously, and the hurt is not to be accepted as normal and natural, but it is abnormal and unacceptable condition for humanness. No wonder that Herod attempted to kill the new Messiah. His position was built on the backs of other people and caused their hurt that corruption calls into focus. If the world was to follow this Christ child, the Herods of the world would not survive. Who or what are Herods in today's world? How would Christ's compassion change their lives? I'll tell you of one Herod that's affected my life. The pharmaceutical companies. My insulin, by mistake, was sent to a local pharmacy. And with the discount, one of my insulins for three months is two thousand eight hundred and some dollars and the other one is four thousand three hundred some dollars so insulin for me on a discount card <laughs> for the year is twenty eight thousand dollars for me to survive and live They never did pass that law that diabetics wouldn't pay more than $30 a month for their insulin on private pay. They proposed it. They never passed it. The pharmaceutical companies are a herod in our society, and they're responsible for the deaths of people, for their profit. Don't worry, I'm getting my insulin some other way. Because there are people out there fighting the Herods. There are organizations that help. But it shouldn't have to be that way. There shouldn't be good pharmacies and bad pharmacies. There shouldn't be pharmaceutical companies just throwing a little bit of charity to some of the poor. Our government insurances shouldn't be built for billions. That's a Herod in our society. So if we were, our nation was living the way of Christ, if the people that owned the stockholders and the owners of pharmaceutical companies were Christian, they wouldn't be doing this. They wouldn't be looking to buy a boat to go in their yacht. They would be concerned whether I or any other diabetic is getting their insulin or not. If they can afford it. And they would be lowering the prices. And our government would be passing those laws that we were promised. That insulin would be available to diabetics at a price that's in touch with reality of what people can afford. Who's your Herod? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to get political with this one, go right ahead. I'm open for criticism. I'm open for debate. Just no profanity, no all caps, no yelling. Polite. debate if that can be managed in today's society have a wonderful and blessed day everyone and don't forget the innocents are dying